You're listening to NFT 365, the first daily podcast on NFTs with your host, Fanzo, talking crypto, blockchain, Web3, non-fungible tokens, metaverse, and... What the f*** is a non-fungible token? We'll get to that. What's up, friends? Uh, Welcome back to another episode of NFT 365. And have you ever thought about getting naked online? Like the power, the superpower that, that comes with getting naked online. I, I'm going to explain more, I promise. And uh, I, even though my last name's Fanzo, we're not talking only fans. Uh, but th- that branding does work pretty well. Before we get into the topic and everything here for the episode, we, of course, are going to talk a little bit about you know our amazing sponsor. And our sponsor is the Crypto Business Conference. Uh, crypto Business Conference is for those that are looking to level up on Web3, NFTs, uh, Metaverse, crypto co- uh, creator coins, and all of those things. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about them at the end uh, of the podcast. And uh, I do want to throw back. Our throwback is actually all the way till yesterday. And for most of you know that, you know, uh, we've minted an NFT on at least 15 blockchains, different, um, you know, different blockchain, uh, different, you know, cryptocurrency, different marketplaces. Like, I, you know, the, the amount of marketplaces is kind of getting uh, over the top. But I can tell you, I, I'm starting to really like the crypto.com marketplace. And yesterday's mint, or actually today's mint, or yesterday's mint, one of the two, depending on when we're listening to this, um, I actually minted uh, the Neon Heritage. And Neon Heritage is actually a photographer. It, his name is Sean Foley in Australia. Shout out to our Aussie listeners. We have a strong Aussie base. I, I see your downloads, uh, my friends down under. And, you know, you might be riding a kangaroo while you're listening, but I appreciate you down there, uh, down under listening uh, to the podcast. But Sean Foley is an Australian street photographer based in Hong Kong. Uh, and take some really cool neon, uh, you know, photos and, you know, just, I really like the art, um, and the way they do like their perks for those that mint, uh, I'm really just liking the, the whole crypto.com. Like I can see everything about the, the, uh, you know, the, the founder of the project. I can see, you know, what, are, what, are, what's the utility, you know, links to all of their portfolios. There was even a link to the video, um, from the photographers. I thought this was a really cool collection. Uh, it also worked really well because for those that are watching us on, uh, the, on the YouTubes, you know, we record a, a podcast episode each and every day on YouTube as well. We actually added a, a new, uh, you know, something new to our background, and it might have something to do with neon. So if you're if you're listening just in your ear holes, you have to go check it out. Jump over to our our YouTube channel, uh, and we actually have a new YouTube channel. So shout out to we're we're moving all of our videos to a dedicated uh, YouTube channel to make it easier for everyone to search and discover the content. So um, we will uh, you know get you linked up on that, uh, and we also have a, a master class that is coming up, and I wanted to give that a, you know a quick shout out. Um, it you know, we have we're doing three uh, different uh, classes, virtual events. Um, these are, you know, we're using a virtual event platform uh, and we're, we're talking three different topics. We're talking security, we're talking community, aka Twitter, and then we're talking your business and brand on Web3. And so they're spread out over uh, the next couple of weeks, but we'll put a link in there uh, for those that want to check them out. You know, I'm excited to really be able to, um, you know, present, you know, like that is my full-time uh, profession. So excited to deliver that content. I'm really going to go down and hopefully, uh, you know, take things to the next level um, when it comes to all of the great things in Web3. So enough about the promo, enough about the intro. Well, I just said we're going to take things further, and I kicked us off by saying we're going to get naked online. I mean, I think some people are like, wait, does this call her daddy? Did we, get, did we listen to the wrong podcast? Uh, no, um, but I, I actually think you know one of the beauties of Web3, of decentralization, is this idea of being naked online. And let me, let me qualify that before I lose you guys from listening, um, and, is that it's about transparency. Now, you know, the beauty of transparency, and, and I, I was, you know, teasing uh, with, uh, you know, before the podcast uh, episode about, you know, like, I've been preaching, you know, the power of transparency for over 10 years. Um, oh, I guess not over 10 years, nine years. Uh, 2000, 2013, um, I started really embracing the power of transparency online. But the thing that I've always had to share was that here's the, here's the, the problem with transparency, is that it also forces us to to deal and handle and in many cases um, have to come to realizations on things that we never have in our entire lives before. And that can be intimidating. It can be overwhelming. It can be uncharted territory. 
And I'm a big believer in transparency is, you know, got to give a shout out to my boy, Bill Murray. Bill Murray is actually doing a drop later this month on crypto.com. Crypto.com is not a sponsor. If they want to, you know, they can hit us up. But um, Bill Murray is doing a drop there. And I love the Bill Murray, what about Bob? Uh, if you're a Gen Z, you got to have to Google it. If you're a millennial, maybe you know the movie. But the, the, the line in there is like baby steps to the elevator, baby steps. And everywhere he takes baby steps. And so when I tell people, you know, I've helped, you know, I've helped some massive authors, uh, executives, um, you know, actually even, uh, you know, some people in different industries uh, from athletes to adult industry that I've helped them build their personal brand and be more, you know, vulnerable and open online. But the thing I always say is we have to take baby steps because it can be um, not only overwhelming, but it, it can be overwhelming for you, the person that's being transparent, but it also can be overwhelming for your audience because they're like, hey, I haven't seen that side of you. And then the interesting thing, you're like, Brian, what the hell does this have to do with Web3? I'm curious, how many of you have your bank account public with how much money you have in your account? If you do, you can hit me up on Twitter. Just show me how much money you have in the bank. And I know everyone's like, ha, huh, yeah, right. Never going to happen. Well, in this world, the blockchain doesn't lie. Hashtag blockchain doesn't lie or don't lie. I don't know. I like both of those. But the blockchain doesn't lie where the fact is we can see where things are coming, where things are going. And if everyone heard in the news, and I know for some maybe it was a little bit confusing, but the um, tornado cash was just banned in the United States. Now, the decentralized maxis are like, this is ridiculous. It's decentralized. No one should be able to ban anything. The the the. The, the haters of Decentralized are like, see, you know, crypto is just for money launderers, and, and that's what Tornado Cash was for. Now, in the middle of this is that it is a little sticky area, but the, what Tornado Cash was mainly being used for, and we have to be honest with ourselves, is that people were using it to hide where crypto was coming and where it was going. Because what you would do is you would send your crypto there and it would come out the back end on a different contract. Therefore, it would not connect the crypto hash of, of transfers from the original one. So it allowed people to launder money or, you know, tornado, you know, mix up the, the crypto and the United States just cracked down on it. Now, I will tell you, I've said this, you know, and I will say this over and over again. These crackdowns are great for bringing businesses and brands into our space. And for anyone that right now is tired of trading money with each other, because that's what we're doing right now. Most of us are just literally buying NFTs from each other. Um, and then we're, we're trying to flip them. We're like, why is nobody buying? Because we're all trying to sell. Then we're all trying to mint. Um, but if we want more like liquidity, we want more, um, let's just say real money to get in, right? Like some, you know, some money that is, uh, you know, that can really make an impact. These type of sanctions where we're, we're now putting some like a little bit of like, I've tried to get out the, get out the gray area, right? Like kind of like m the gray muddy area is that, is that spot where you have to fix. But with that being said, you know, Tornado Cash was one of the ones that, you know, I know, I mean, I, so personally I used it, I used it twice, um, both because I wanted to be able to talk about it and I'm someone that if I'm not using it, it's sure as hell hard for me to explain it. And so, um, it did work. It worked very like seamlessly, like I'm talking super easy, um, in and out. Um, but you know, much like, uh, you know, any of these type of, you know, uh, f third, I wouldn't even say the third party, like fourth party, um, you know, platforms, you just have to be careful and like where all of that's going because it's definitely very unregulated. But, you know, part of that that existed was because people would, you know, rather than sending money straight from my, you know, Coinbase or my crypto.com account or my FTX account, you know, I could send it to Tornado Cash and then send it to my wallet. And if you were tracking it back, you couldn't actually see which exchange I was using, right? So you wouldn't be able to track back, um, you know, some of the funds and things that, you know, that we had, that we are using. And so the reason that, like, that I bring that up is, you know, transparency, I, I believe, is part of what the burnout and the overwhelm is happening for a lot of, uh, of founders. And then the flip side of this, it is also very intimidating for influencers and those that have wallets that are very public. I, I know many of you that listen, um, and I've been okay with this since day one. Many of you that listen, um, you know, you track my wallet, right? Fanzo.eth um, is one of, you know, one of the, the nine wallets that I have uh, on ETH. Um, and, and for me, that's, that's, that's totally fine. I, I have no problem, you know, being uh, open with that. But I will tell you, here's the funny thing about that. I, and I'm just going to be very, very vulnerable and I'll get naked with you real quick because this is where the, you know, transparency and vulnerability show up is that there are, are some times where I'm like, oh man, people are going to see me sell that for a loss. 
And in some cases, I've decided not to sell something or put something out, even though I needed the liquidity, because I knew the that vulnerability of like, and it's not like I'm trying to pull one over on people, but I'm like, man, they're going to see I bought that at 1.4 ETH. I just sold it for 4.9 ETH. I almost took a, you know, a one ETH of 5,000 or not. ETH is not 5,000 anymore. Uh, I took like a $2,000, um, you know, bath. Um, and, and I say that because, you know, transparency, giving people access. And, 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 I, and before we go any further, I, I want to level set. And this is something I talk about on stages. Um, I think this is actually something that, uh, you know, if you listen to me, if you follow me, you know, I'm very open and honest. I let people in. Um, but the thing about transparency, transparency and oversharing are not the same thing. Transparency, all transparency does is it gives people a window, an authentic window in to decide if you're trustworthy and to see your vulnerabilities, the, you know, your bad side, your, your, what underwear you're wearing, whatever, you know, like it's that window in, but it does not guarantee trust. Right, if you are a slimy slime ball and you've moved out of the country to you know hide your past and you are transparent, I just get to determine that you're a slimy slime ball faster. And so transparency for those that are shady, those that are up to no good, is a very scary alternative. Now, I will also say on the flip side of this, I also understand that you know it can be a slippery slope because what is regulated today might be differently regulated in the future and you don't know what how that's going to like kind of work right it's like i don't like the whole adage of like don't plead the fifth on the stand if you got nothing to hide well pleading the fifth actually is you know it's a fundamental right here in the united states for us not to have to answer certain questions where we feel like we don't want to answer the question or we might you know um you know get ourselves in additional trouble and and for me like there, there's like that weird gray line right because do we, when someone says they're going to plead the fifth, do we assume that they are hiding something or are they just not comfortable with that being on record or are they, they know that they, it might be twisted and taken somewhere else. Um, and for someone that, you know, that has recently gone through a divorce, um, I can tell you a lot of those things kind of come into play, right? Figuring out like, it's not as much like I'm worried about what I'm sharing. I'm worried how that's going to be used like, against me or for me. And so I say all of that because I am a huge believer in transparency. I believe if you want to build trust at scale, if you want to not get overwhelmed, the more transparent you can be online, the more freedom you will have. Let me say that again. The more transparent you can be online, the more freedom you will have to be yourself. And I will tell you, the easiest thing to do in the world is being ourselves. If anyone has seen that TV show Catfish, uh, and for those that haven't seen it, it was an MTV show. Um, you know what they were doing is they were pretending to be uh, someone that was going to go, you know, going on a date or or you know cheating, or they were making they were pretending that they were someone that they were not, right? It was a guy pretending to be a girl, and they were catfishing him, right? Sending him, uh, you know, fake pictures. Uh, there were, there was a famous uh, Notre Dame linebacker, uh, Ty Mateo. Um, I'm a big Notre Dame fan, um, and he he got catfished, where he was talking to someone online that. Um, like he wanted to get engaged to this uh, woman that he was talking to online um, and had multiple phone calls with her um, and turned out it wasn't a her. It was a, 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 an ex friend of his playing uh, a prank on him. And I say that because the, the amount of work that goes in to being someone that you are not online is overwhelming and tiring. And I say that because like if right now, if you're like, man, it's so stressful to post on Instagram or get in the Discord or go on Twitter. I believe a lot of that stress comes in the fact of we are trying to put on something online that isn't actually 100% us, right? We're trying to portray either like, wow, hey, I'm a D-Gen, but maybe I'm really not. Or, hey, I got plenty of crypto, but we know, you know, th those type of things. But where this all kind of comes into play here is like I feel for a lot of founders and a lot of people, uh, and I'm sure... I've shared this before and I will not ever disclose their names, but I've had three founders that are in three big projects that I hold um, that have got on Zoom calls with me over the last year and broke down crying, broke down extremely emotional. And I will just say, um, this is a you know side caveat, um, it's okay for men to cry. I am a crier. I got emotional last night um, watching a, a really uh, interesting uh, t new new documentary on Netflix. Uh, and actually, it's a friend. Uh, the lawyer that was on the show is actually someone I follow on Twitter and engage with. Um, but the name of the, the Netflix documentary is, is I Killed My Dad. 
uh, and you'll have to go watch it because it is it's really 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 good. But I say all of that because the the whole like this whole you know like bridge into you know not only you know being ourselves online and and showing up um, you know as our our true selves is that you know like the 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 amount of Man, the amount of things that all of a sudden are that are thrown in our face that we've never had to deal with before can be extremely overwhelming. And, and I'm going to give an example that's not tied to Web3 just for everyone. That, like for anyone that's ever, maybe no one, maybe some of some people that are listening have never posted, you know, about politics or religion or about a movement. But, you know, here in the United States, you know, the, the, the murder of George Floyd um, was one that I, you know, I believe, you know, turned a lot of people uh, and including myself, you know, realizing that, you know, I, I not only need to take a stand, but I need to use my voice. But the truth is, if you are talking about something, you're sharing about something, you're, you're letting people in for, for another part of you. If you've never done that before, here's the, here's the scary part. You're not used to handling what people are going to say or do. So if you're an NFT founder and you've never kind of like you've never had to like, you know, have your books public with your team and all of a sudden people are like, hey, why did you take that money out of your wallet? Like that, it's in the, the funds are in the community wallet. I saw you transferred it out to your your exchange. What are you doing? Right. And all of a sudden it's like, why is there this pressure? I, I have to pay my bills. Like, of course, I have to take it out. Right. So there's this transparency that is that lives in Web3 from decentralization, from the fact people can see where we move things, where we buy things. Um, I, I, for one, I really, really love what it, what it can enable you know, long term. But I also just want to be very clear that we this is the spot where we have to give grace to a lot of people that are maybe not handling things the best. And one of those things can be mental health. I know that it's become a little bit, um, and I don't even want to say this because I don't like going that. that. It's, it's, there's a lot more people talking about mental health in Web3, and I think that's an amazing thing. And, and, and hey, and you know, back to that full circle is, you know, I'm a man that cried last night watching that movie on Netflix, and I am perfectly okay crying. My daughters know that I cry you know, when American Ninja Warrior does their backstories on the, the, the competitors. I get emotional. So, you know, I had three founders that were emotional with me, and it was because I could relate. I could understand. I could see what they were going through and the pressures that they were, were under. And part of it also was that mental health piece because one of the founders you know, said, hey, I finally just decided to share about my depression for the first time. Now, the caveat to this is trigger warning. I don't want to trigger anyone that's listening. So you, if you are listening and you might be triggered by something in this space, you can pause and kind of fast forward a minute and a half or so. Um, and I don't want to you know, uh, cause any harm in that, in that way. But you know, th- for, for him, um, he had never talked about his depression openly before. And he was inundated with questions and people that wanted to help and people that had remedies. Um, I, for one, know how that goes because if I mention ADHD on stage at any event, I can guarantee you I will have four, usually ladies, that will come up to me um, with some kind of herbal remedy that will say, hey, Brian, I know that you talked about being on Adderall, but have you tried? And it's some kind of concoction. And, and funny enough is I'm usually like, I haven't, and I'm willing because I like to try different things, and uh, I'm not stuck on you know what I'm dealing with here. But the, I say all of that because you know, when he shared that he opened up about depression, my heart sank. Because I knew that all of a sudden he was going to have to handle, have to, and he wasn't prepared. And I, and I say all of that because it, it, it ties into this because if you are not prepared, like when we hear people say this is a safe space, um, I, we should, first of all, we need to remove that from our vernacular unless we know that we're setting up for a safe space, which means giving trigger warnings as I just did a minute ago, right? If you were going to talk about something that might trigger someone else's mental illness or things that they are going through, we need to give a trigger warning so that people are prepared to handle that. We also have to recognize that we need to have professionals, not those that stayed in a holiday inn or those that, you know, got a good night's sleep that claiming to be, those that are professionals that are on standby or at easy disposal if we're walking down a path that we are not, you know, we are not professionally trained to handle. But part of that is the idea that like, transparency, much like sharing in the mental health side, will open up things. And, and the beauty of it is that the more you kind of prepare yourself and then you kind of lean into it, the more that freedom comes. Like I, I really do believe I, no hater and no bully scares me today. Now, I will tell you that was not the case five years ago, seven years ago. 
I was, I'm a people pleaser at heart. I was, I was the kid that would always wanted everyone to like him. I still kind of, you know, that's still something that I, you know, I work with, but I will tell you the reason that I, I'm not scared of any haters or any naysayers or people coming at me today is because I own all of my dirty laundry. I am far from perfect. I've made plenty of mistakes in my life and I have no problem owning that. But, you know, it's taken me a long time to get to that spot. And because of that, it allows me to actually have freedom in, like, I will push back. Like, if we're in a Twitter space and someone says something um, in a way that I don't think is appropriate, I have no problem stepping up to the plate. And because I know that I might, you know, turn some heads or I might get some people that are like, you know, in my DMs trying to, you know, correct me or tell me what I did wrong. But I am extremely comfortable in my own skin in, in where I, and how I show up online. And, and, I will, and I say all that because it's been a journey. 2013, it started. And I would say maybe three years ago, I got a little bit, you know, to the point where I can pretty much own everything that's going on in my world. And so the, the part of this that's so important in Web3 is we just have to prepare ourselves for that, right? Like if you've never had somebody realize how much money you're making or not making, you, you kind of have to look at that, right? Because like there are some people, uh, I'll give a shout out to Drew, uh, you know, on our team. Um, you know, Drew's been uh, doing some pretty good flipping lately. He's been uh, selling out of, on uh, NFTs on the top. And, and and Drew didn't tell me that. I have his wallet up. I can see, I'm like, damn, he bought that, you know, he bought this, uh, you know, NFT at 0.3. He just sold it for 1.4. And, and the thing about that is I do believe we are going to move towards a, um, you know, options that we're going to have to where, you know, it won't be as transparent on the blockchain. Eventually we'll have some contracts and things that exist. I know Vitalik, uh, Vitalik I mentioned on the other episode, um, is working on some, you know, a couple of those things. Cause you know, like when you like, you know, when you, let's say you file for a divorce and if our marriage license are, are in our wallet, which I believe wholeheartedly in five years, uh, especially here in the United States, we will have, like, you know, those kind of documents in on the blockchain. You know, we don't want that to be transparent when all of a sudden the marriage license is no longer there because you got separated divorce. Um, and we will have contracts that exist in that way. But I, I say, I, I also think that this comes into play. And in some cases, I'm, I'm going to challenge all of our listeners right now. You might be like, Brian, that's right. But like, I'm not a founder of a project and I don't really care what people, you know, say or think or do. I'm going to challenge that notion real quick. How many people right now would put up, you know, post on Twitter their four best NFT purchases and their four worst NFT purchases? Like, I tell you what, I love that hide button. That hide button on OpenSea, I mean, I, I pummel that, right? When I, like, I jump in a project, I'm like, oh, I message a team. I'm like, I got one. I snipe this one. I got it. And all of a sudden, the, I, I realize I bought the top and the floor comes down and I'm like, oh, my God. Now I'm going to be stuck with this NFT and I hit hide, right? Now, remember, when you hide something like in a marketplace, because OpenSea is not decentralized, OpenSea connects to the decentralized blockchain, but OpenSea is a centralized front end. You know, yes, you can hide it on your OpenSea, but here's the truth. If I am looking on Etherscan at your wallet, I get to see what NFTs move in and what NFTs move out. It does not matter if you hide it on OpenSea or not. It doesn't matter if you hide it on look. You could hide it on Looks Rare, OpenSea, Coinbase, GameStop, NFT, all every single marketplace. And the blockchain is where these transactions are fully transparent. And I'm not saying that to scare, because here's the beauty of this. I, I, I use this example. Shaq gives back, right? And I and I'll I'll use it for any social good, right? The idea of donating to a charity. We've all heard the the, the horror stories where only three percent of our donation actually gets to the cause that we believe in, right? It, it goes to like all these other people on the way. They pay for overhead. They pay for employees. And by the time it gets down to like drinking water for the person that you're donating for, it's not even there for them, right? And we don't really even know that until it got exposed. Why they like? Why don't they have that much money to buy as much water as they need to buy? Um, and I, and for anyone who doesn't know the the whole water story, there's a great book and a uh, one of my favorite keynote speakers uh, talks on the on that whole um, you know piece and how that was exposed and he created a whole uh, ecosystem. But the the piece of that that I love about the blockchain is if you are setting up a social good campaign and you say 20% of our um, revenue will go to this charity and this is that charity's wallet, guess what you can do? You can have it automatically set up in your contract that 20% automatically gets sent to that wallet. And now I don't have to be like, do I trust them enough to donate? Because here's the, here's the truth. If you're not doing it on the blockchain, I might not trust you. 
right? Where, where we're at right now, if, if it's not happening on the blockchain, if you tell me, Brian, I'm, I, I'm taking that money to my bank account and then I'm doing the 20% and then I'm sending it to the charity, red flag. And if on top of that, you're, you're not doxxed, you're using a, a pseudo uh, name, um, you're, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've had enough on that, that conversation now, right? So the flip side of this, and, and, I, and, and I'll tie back into that, even that idea of not being doxxed. This is why for some projects, I'm okay with some of the people that are not doxxed, um, which means they have not you know, exposed their identity. And the reason I've been okay with them in the past is guess what I do? I go through their Twitter account, not, not the last three months, not the last six months. I go back in advanced search on Twitter. There's some alpha for you. Advanced search on Twitter is one of the, the greatest tools that ever existed and pretty much nobody uses it. But if, you, if you're on Twitter, you just click a little um, settings button at the end of the search bar and it'll pop up and say advanced search. You can pick the year. You can pick the words you want to search, the words you want to omit, the people you want them, just the people you follow, just this person. You can, I mean, it is pretty amazing. But I like to go back into people's Twitter feeds long before they think people are looking. I also go and look at the founder's wallet and I say, okay, are they being shady? Are they doing a lot of like bot trades? Like what are they doing? What are their transfers? What are their activity tab? Uh, and Delphi cat, there's an activity tab on, uh, on OpenSea. just, uh, uh, FYI, uh, that's a little inside joke. Uh, cause I live on that activity tab there in the, in the marketplace. Um, and, and she knew where it was, but, but I, she didn't, she told me she didn't know where it was. And it was like a whole fun little conversation there. Um, but w you know, with all of that kind of, you know, the idea that I can, this person, I don't know this person's name. I don't know their background. I only know that, you know, their, whatever their Twitter handle is. I can go back and look at what they started sharing at the beginning of their Twitter account. I can go look at their wallet and their transactions and track things down and be like, ooh, they preach about, they don't want flipping and they preach about supporting women-led projects, yet I don't see a women-led project in their bag and all I do is see them pumping and dumping. Well, guess what? I can determine, I, I, that transparency, right, gives me that window to determine if you are trustworthy. Transparency does not guarantee trust, but also transparency can expose things and, 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 and have us required to share things and be open about things um, that, you know, haven't been there before. The last thing I want to say about transparency, um, and I know most of you are like, wait, I tuned into an episode about getting naked. I definitely didn't think it was going to go 30 minutes, um, 30 minutes you know, plus cuddling, that's way too much. Yeah, 30 minutes doesn't work for me. Um, but with that being said, um, I wanted to kind of wrap it into that, that end part of this, right, where, you know, I, I mentioned about, like, the person being doxxed, and then, of course, the transparency of your, of your uh, you know, of your wallet. But here's what other, here's what transparency also does. For those that are transparent, and, and you're putting yourself out there, and when someone else is not as transparent, we have a tendency to call them out publicly more often. We have a tendency to immediately jump to the thing like, hey, I don't believe you. And a great example of this was the Moonbirds with the CCO drama that happened last Friday. Moonbirds, um, they're actually going to do it in a couple of days, but up until, this mo up until this announcement, they were not transparent with their roadmap or what their plans were for a proof collective Moonbirds and Moonbirds oddities. Because people, you know, were not, they didn't have that access, they didn't have that transparency of where things were going, when all of a sudden they made this big pivot to CCO, the people jumped to conclusions that I don't even, like, I mean, I'm talking even, like, the furthest conspiracy theorists would not have jumped to these conclusions normally. But in a world where we are used to transparency at certain things, which is what Web3 is enabling, when we don't have it, we almost always jump to these like, you know, massive things. Like, I mean, someone, you know, like, I mean, as far as being like, hey, did you know Kevin Rose moved to Los Angeles? I wonder if that has anything to do with, you know, their decision to change their, you know, their policies and such, right? Like, I mean, and, and, and here's the, the, the beauty of it is if they had been transparent and they made that decision publicly, people would be like, hey, I know that this is where they're going. And even though I might disagree with this decision they've made, I still believe that they're still going to the same place they've been transparent with me on, and I'm going to go with them on this ride. So I'm saying all of this to say transparency is a double-edged sword. Transparency in some cases gives people a false illusion. Transparency in other cases exposes you to things and conversations that you are not prepared to have. And that also includes things like ADHD or mental health or being vulnerable. 
if you are not in the place, if you are not comfortable enough, or you know, the, the, the saying is in like the mental health community, is you need to, you need to speak from the, the scar, not the wound. Womb, wound wound so you know in the sense of it you know if it's still bleeding if it still hurts for you to talk about and it's still like it's too raw you shouldn't talk about it right then you you aren't prepared and even if you think you are you might trigger someone else because you are that 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 vulnerability is so raw but if it's become a scar and you've been able you know the, it's kind of it's kind of worn over and you know uh, i'm going medical here you know who knew where this podcast was going? Um, but the idea that, you know, it's from a scar. Well, now you're like, hey, I'm used to it. Like, I have a scar on my forehead. I was four years old. I stepped on a soccer ball and planted my face in, uh, in a gravel uh, driveway. And my mom, you know, unfortunately was home without a car and we didn't get stitches. And so I have a scar. And I can speak about that scar because it's something that's in the past and I'm, I'm over it. And it's something we're moving on from. And so the reason I say that is when I hear people say like, you know, hey, we're, this is a, a, a safe uh, room, you know, anyone can share their journey. Just know that determining what your level of comfort and of transparency is, is only your decision in those cases. You are not obligated to share the, the things that you are going through. You are not obligated to put those things out there. Now, I will say, in many cases, if you are at that scar part, and you're able to share, not only will it help you feel not, you know, less alone and get things off of your chest, but it'll also allow you to be more relatable with others. Because I firmly believe that our vulnerabilities connect us with others much more than our strengths. Our vulnerability, think about your friends and the people that you're like, you know what, we were hanging out and then I realized that we both sneak outside and smoke cigarettes. Um, and when I realized that, like we started talking and hanging out and we connected, right? Like you related over the fact that you were both, you know, hiding to, you know, smoke cigarettes, right? Or, you know, for me, like, you know, ADHD or even co-parenting, right? As a, a, as a co-parent um, and as a dad of little girls, when I started talking about co-parenting very openly, the amount of dads that like connected with me that I can call really good friends that were following me for years, but we didn't have that like bonding um, component. And so all of this plays into this world for me. And, and, I, and I'll leave this part that I think is also important is that I also believe transparency will be another key component for breeding innovation at scale. It's why I like the Creators Commons license as a whole, because the more transparent we can be with how we're doing things, why we're doing things, where we're doing things, the more we can build on top and grow together. If we're not as transparent and we're like, I'm going to hold on and take my baseball and go home, then guess what? In those cases, we aren't able to learn from each other as much. And the last thing I will put out there is, no, I, I am not saying get naked online. So, you know, this is not financial advice. Do your own damn research. And if you so choose to get naked online, let it be your own decision. Uh, I support anyone that is not uh, willingly uh, hurting someone else or hurting themselves. And, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, you know, the, the world allowing us to, uh, you know, kind of be ourselves online and, and do things that make ourselves happy. And I also am a big fan of, of just like, we also have to recognize that, you know, transparency also, in many cases, will show our biases and things that we were not aware that we had. And it's okay to recognize that maybe you made bad decisions or maybe you, you judged people more than you probably should. I mean, we've all done it, right? You see somebody with a PFP come into a Twitter space and you're like, and you hear their voice, you're like, oh, this 22-year-old crypto bro, here we go. Come to find out they're, you know, they're, they're a 33-year-old, uh, you know, the, with a degree from Harvard that have launched, you know, five startups that own 10 board apes um, and, you know, minted them from the, the beginning and, have, and helping other people in the space, right? Like, we've all gone to those places where we judge people. But when the transparency layer comes up, what it often does is it's like, ooh, I was wrong about those people or I was wrong about that scenario. The beauty of that is... The more we're all transparent, the more we're going to recognize that we're pretty much, a lot of it, we're the same. We like the same things. We care about the same things. We are not that much different than each other. I don't care your skin, your sexual orientation, your background, your resume, where you live in the world. For the most part, we are pretty damn alike. The problem is we've been, been selling these face, false bill of goods online and, and kind of hiding that from everyone and hiding that from the world. 
Of course, I want to give a shout out to our, our amazing sponsor. We have, uh, you know, Crypto Business Conference is our, uh, our sponsor. You know, excited to be a part of that event. You know, it is happening uh, October 9th to the 11th in beautiful San Diego, California. Um, I will not be naked on that stage. So, uh, Mike Stelzner, I know you listen. You don't have to worry about that. Um, and I, you know, one of the things that I not only love about what you know, crypto business uh, conference is representing, but the other part of this is like we can learn from a lot of these other events, right? So if someone's, and I'll just put this out there, right? We can learn from other Web three events, but the other part of it, Social Media Examiner, the the parent company behind Crypto Business Conference, has been putting on the world's largest social media conference for many, many, many years. I've been a, a, I attended the first year, and I've been a speaker every year since, and they know what they're doing. And the beauty of that is. Those like kind of like Web3 NFT meetup, uh, you know, learning mistakes that people, you know, they don't buy enough food or they don't reserve enough space or they didn't, you know, air conditioning is a problem. That, that is something that, you know, for me is exciting about going to a conference and knowing that the team that's putting it on are, are professionals and put on uh, a great event and a great show. Lastly, I, I'm going to just touch on the fact that, you know, not only... You know, is it important for us to, you know, recognize that we're, you know, we're all not alone on this journey and, and that we're not much different from each other? You know, the other part of this I just want to say is it's okay to not be okay right now. Like, if you're struggling at the moment and you're not okay, just know that you're not alone. And sometimes a day is not going to be as, as, perf- as good as you want. We, in this space, we have so many things that are outside of our control. We probably walk into some days that are not okay more than we ever have in our lives before. And I think giving ourselves grace and letting ourselves know hey, it's okay to, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to let this, you know, change my every day of my future, but it's okay to not be okay because, you know, I firmly do believe we will get through this. I also will say just for the, any of those that, you know, are feeling overwhelmed or lonely, like, please reach out and get support, you know, call the hotlines that are there, reach out to your friends and, and family. Um, you know, we, we have definitely lost, you know, too many people for uh, way too many things from global pandemics to uh, to cancer, to everything else that's going on in this space. And, um, and you know, in that, in that vein, uh, you know, the, the thing that we can do for everyone is just let people know that they're not alone and that we're there on the journey. And I believe we're all going to, we, we got this. We, we got this. It's a hashtag I used a lot during COVID because I, I believe that we, together, we're going to get through this. We're going to learn. We're going to grow. And we're also going to recognize that, you know, transparency is going to come with a lot of trial and error you're going to test out, you're going to share something, you're going to be like, whoa, I didn't expect that reaction. And then it's up to you to decide what is that you know, risk versus reward and how you react and how you move forward. But as speaking as someone that is massively transparent and open um, online, the freedom that it enables allows me to do something crazy, like a daily podcast that's also a YouTube video that I also create content on Instagram. I tweet about 40 times a day. I'm in our Discord. All of that is only possible because I am doing the one thing that I know I can do better than anyone in the world, and that's be myself. I can be myself just about anywhere, and, and the beauty of that is you don't have to worry about somebody copying you or someone stealing your work because I mean, there is really only one Brian Vanzo. Until tomorrow, my friends, make it a great day. Cheers.